So today I'm reviewing the EG4 9000 BTU uh, mini split here. And this is not the one that also operates off solar alone. Uh, the reason I didn't get that one was because I'm using this in my master bedroom, uh, mainly at night. So there's really no reason for me to run it when the sun's out. We're not using this bedroom anyway. So, um, and another reason actually is the smallest one that EG4 makes that runs on solar is 12,000 BTU. And that's just overkill for my master bedroom and bathroom combined here that only totals about 300 square feet. Now this is considered a DIY mini split, meaning that you don't need an expensive HVAC technician to install this thing because there's pre-charged refrigerant lines. Um, what that means is there is no need to have a vacuum pump to vacuum this thing out before you let the refrigerant in. So you can save a fortune on that. Now I know there's gonna be some HVAC contractors in the comments here, they're gonna yell at me saying that they're worth the cost of the install. And look, I, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I contacted multiple HVAC companies within my area here of Central Texas, and most of them said they wouldn't even take a look at it. They wouldn't even install this if it wasn't them bringing their own product in to install. And the one that did say they would consider installing it said, they're, I'm looking at about $3,000 to install this thing. So that's just not worth it. I was able to install this thing in less than eight hours of my own time by myself. So, and honestly, I don't blame these HVAC contractors. I mean, it, it costs a fortune to run a business these days. And with inflation as out of control as it is, payroll, you got to pay people a lot of money now to go out there in the field and do work. So, so this review is based solely on the air conditioning portion of this. It does do heating also, but because it's so hot right now, as I'm recording this, it's August in Central Texas. So we're seeing 105 degree days and at night it's not getting below 75. And what I'm reading, it's not good to run these outdoor units on this thing when it's above, at least in heat mode, when it's above 75 degrees. So I'm not gonna take that risk. So I'll just have to review the heating portion of this another time. Now this mini split is rated to cool or heat up to 500 square feet. Now I'm using this uh, to cool about 300 square feet. So just to let you know what the numbers for me are right now. Now this is only a 9,000 BTU unit, um, which means it only has one air handler. So this is the only air handler it has and this feeds just my master bedroom and my master bathroom. Now let's get into the pros and cons of this thing. But actually, before I do that, I wanted to let you know that if you end up using my link in the description to buy this mini split, I wanna say thank you by giving you a discount code to download my ebook about solar that I'm gonna be releasing here. It looks like in October of 2023, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, and it's gonna be basically on what on everything I've learned about going off grid with solar and not trying to live like a caveman here, trying to live with air conditioning, heating, um, all your normal things we've come to like um, inside our house. And in that ebook, I'll be discussing how to size your system, um, the energy efficient appliances that I use, the payback period, um, the systems to avoid, uh, the best way to finance it, how to run your batteries at night efficiently to keep from draining them dead, um, and a lot more that I can go into in this video, but I'd like to give you a discount code to download that for free. So email me, there'll be an email in the uh, description of this video that you can get a hold of me. Just let me know you use my link to buy this, uh, this mini split or actually any piece of equipment in any of my videos that you buy. Um, if you use my link for that, let me know. I'll put you on the list to send you a discount code where you can download that ebook for free when it does come out. Okay, so to the pros. Number one, this thing is extremely quiet. It is running right now in turbo mode, which is the highest fan mode operate and you can't even hear it is my guess. I mean, when it's in regular operating mode and like regular fan mode, you don't even realize it's on. It's crazy how quiet this thing is. So, but even in turbo mode, I run it like this at night. It doesn't bother me at all. Now, pro number two, it puts out very cold air. It's 105 degrees right now in Texas. And even when I run this thing during the day, which is not very often, but I do for testing purposes, it's still putting out low 40s air out of this thing right here. So it is extremely cold. I am very impressed with how, how efficient it is. All right, pro number three, as I mentioned earlier in this video, uh, it just takes one person about eight hours to install this thing. Um, and you don't need an HVAC contractor, which is a huge bonus. You'll save a fortune on that. And now that I know actually what I'm doing with this thing, I can install this in five hours now. I spent a lot of time just kind of thinking about it, reading the manual, taking my time, but now I can install this really fast. Now pro number four, it uses very little electricity. Now, this is my favorite part and why I bought it. So it is a 29.5 SEER 2 rated unit. 
that is extremely efficient. Um, to do a ballpark calculation on how many watts this thing is going to, watt hours this thing is going to use on average, you take the total BTUs, which this thing is 9,000, you divide that by the SEER rating of 29.2. That comes out to 305. So what that means is this thing is going to run on average if you have, if it's sized correctly for the right size room and you have decent insulation, this thing is going to run on average about 305 watt hours or pull 305 watts per hour. Um, that's what I like to say. I don't know that's not grammatically correct in electrical engineering terms, but it helps me and other people, I think, who are beginners understand this stuff. So when I run this thing overnight, which is about 9 p.m. to 8 a.m., it uses right around 4 kilowatt hours from my battery bank. And that is nothing to run air conditioning all night, especially in these Texas temperatures where our nights are still 92 degrees at around 9 o'clock. And when you shoot by 8 a.m., it's maybe getting down to about 77 now. So this thing uses so little electricity, I actually ended up tapping into one of my wall outlets in my bedroom here, um, a 15 amp circuit. And I mean, it runs at peak that I've seen about 930 watts. And that's when it's just starting up, it's really trying to cool everything down, and it only runs on that for about 30 minutes to an hour, and then it drops way down once it hits the temperature and just maintains that whatever temperature you have it set at. It just maintains that at running around 200 to 300 watts it runs per hour on that, or uh, watt hours, so incredibly efficient. And even at its highest, at 900 watts, that's only half of my 15 amp circuit that I have on just my wall outlets here. So. For me, that's the way I did it. Now, they don't recommend you doing that. They always recommend installing this on a dedicated circuit, either a 15 or a 20 amp circuit. So I'm not saying you do it that way. That's just the way I did it and it's worked fine for me. All right, pro number five, it has a smartphone app that you can monitor how much energy it's using or kilowatts or watts, watt hours. And the reason I like, you can turn it on and off from anywhere in the world, which is really nice because if I go away for half the day or a full day, I don't have to leave this running all day to make sure my room stays cool. I can wait, I can leave it off all day, save energy, and then about half hour, an hour before I end up coming home, I can turn this thing on, and this bedroom is cool before I even get here, saving a lot of electricity. All right, now for the cons. So number one, it's a sizable investment at about $1,300 for this thing. You can buy an equivalent window unit air conditioner for about $600, so it's about double the price of one of those. Now granted, the window unit that doesn't have a heating function like this does, and also that window unit is pretty annoying because you can't use the window at all during the year. So if you have a nice day, you can't even open the window to let a breeze come through. So, and also the window units are going to use a lot more electricity. They're not near as efficient as this either. So, you know, that being said, it is still a con. And the second con on this thing, which is probably the biggest one for me, and I'm sure a lot of you, is the line set, which is the basically the refrigerant lines that come out the back, that go out the wall, and then down the wall to the outdoor unit. Those are only 16 feet long. So... I have the unit literally mounted right behind the wall right here. So it's not a problem for me, but for some people, I could see that being an issue. And I talked to EG4 about that and said, hey, do you have like an extension you could put on these things? And they said, yes, you can, but they don't come with refrigerant. So you're going to have to have an HVAC person come out to extend the line set for you to fill that ref with refrigerant. And that to me defeats the purpose. That makes this way more uh, expensive if you're hiring an HVAC guy to come out and help you with it. So. That is a con, so you have to have to have an exterior wall where you can put the unit pretty close to that. So keep that in mind before buying this thing. And that's all the cons I have for this thing. So as you can see, the pros really outweigh the cons. So I highly recommend you buying this thing if you want something for like a master bedroom size room to keep really cool or warm at night on a lot less electricity than you'd normally use on a space heater or your whole house furnace or whatever form of heating you're using. And especially this thing is useful if you're like me trying to run on batteries at night and stay off grid. Now purchasing energy efficient appliances like this is always cheaper, at least this far with where lithium batteries are, than actually buying lithium batteries for less efficient appliances. So keep that in mind. If you'd like to download a free PDF diagram of my entire solar system, basically how I wired it, the equipment I used, all the equipment with links on how to get everything, um, I'll leave a link in the description for that or you can go to solarpdfdownload.com, enter your name and email address, and you can get it that way as well. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, make sure you like this video, and uh, we will see you in the next video. Thanks, everyone.